I think for a lot of people, the mistake you make is you work all these hours. Like we had the twins, I would go to work, be a leaf for work, I'd leave at like eight, nine in the morning, you know, stay till 10, 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, come home, you're not present in your marriage, you're not present in your children's life, you know, and then you, and then you use the excuse that I'm doing this for us. In reality, in retrospect, you're not, you're doing it for yourself, right? And it's a strange balance you have to work through. How Difficult. long did that take you to reach that conclusion? And how did you Wild. reach that confusion? Was Laura like, I, what I the hell? <laughs> I think th there's a give and take with everything. Like for me, Laura and I got separated at one point because of it. And I think that was a big wake up call for me. And twins are about two. Because it was true. Like I would leave for work seven o'clock in the morning, come home at 10, 30 at night, right? I, I think you, you're kidding yourself thinking that you're actually that you're doing well by your family, because in theory, you're not, right? Maybe you'll advance your career, but you're causing and missing out on opportunities in life with your family. So to that younger husband, to the younger father, who's in that stage of grinding, in the stage of trying to achieve, and maybe isn't home as much either. Maybe they're missing birthday parties or holidays or Valentine's days or whatever that may be. What would you tell them? I think I would share my personal story. I would tell them I was the same as you. I was separated for about a year and a half because of it. And to this day, every day, I regret every moment I didn't see my children right for a year and a half. And for what? Mm. To be a district customer solutions manager, to make $12,000 more a year. I mean, I would have ended up where I ended up anyway. And I think in the big retrospect, I can't get that year and a half back. I can't get those experiences that time. The pain I caused my wife, the whole concept there. Um, you're kidding yourself and it's a self-centered approach. I think you have to really clearly understand in life, you have to have a path, but your path has to include work, children, family, and you have to understand what those constraints are. You have to place those constraints on yourself. You have to define your life. More importantly, you have to understand that every level of leadership that you move up, the only thing you have as a tradable commodity is your life, your time. And, you know, if you're someone that's willing to trade that, which I call today selling your soul, all the time, then you then you probably shouldn't get married, right? Mm -hmm. and, and my point, and I think that's why we see the higher divorce rate and other components, but I think people have to process that. Like if you want to coach soccer and be around for that component, you have to understand there's a constraint on salary and other components. Stay within the constraint. Uh, I think you got to be careful what you, you wish for in life because you're going to put the effort and time in and you're not going to get the reward you want. You're going to lose out the more you gain. And there was actually a, uh, pretty high ranking member of Lowe's leadership at one point. I won't share his name or anything, but at one point he was like third in command of Lowe's, multi-millionaire, started out there as like a lawn and garden part-time associate. And I remember sitting there once we were at a sales meeting and I went with him, someone that knew him very well, it was a friend of mine, and we went and sat on the lawn of the resort. We had a six pack of beer when we were talking. And he did share that if he could redo his whole career, he wouldn't move as much, would have taken the promotional opportunities. Irregardless of how much money he's made in life, he really felt that it damaged his children, created problems, why his one child had a lot of issues. All the times he moved and what he sacrificed to create a, a very selfish, self-centered rise for the you know, idea of power and other components that he really made his family suffer through the last 20, 25 years. And I'll never forget that hit me so hard at one point because here's a gentleman that you think would say life is perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm worth like $35 million. I make four or 5 million a year. And in retrospect, he's saying if he could do it over, he would stay the store manager. Mm. So uh, I, I think that would be the advice I give. Find out what you want out of life, understand what you're trying to contribute who's going to be involved, create a plan, stick to the plan, and don't sell yourself on that idea. If I work 70, 80 hours a week, uh, I'm going to make it to X level because it's not going to happen because the people that get there don't work 70, 80 hours a week. They normally work 40 to 45.